Welcome to Three Count Commentaries. This is your host, Mongo Slade. Um, I've been trying to avoid this subject, talking about Drake Wirtz again, because I've done numerous videos about Drake Wirtz already. And David Bixen Span is absolutely obsessed with this guy. And so is Sean Ross Sapp. Uh, the last several weeks, these guys have been absolutely obsessed with quote unquote QAnon conspiracy theorists, whether it's EC3, whether it's Braun Strowman, whether it's Killer Cross, whether it's Drake Works. It's just been obsessed with these guys and following them all around the Internet. David Bixen Span has been following uh, Drake Works around the Internet, following his Facebook account, following him on uh, what was Gab, the conservative answer to Twitter, following him all around the Internet just for the last year. He's been following this guy around. You think Drake Works was involved with something literally brutal and murderous the way that Drake worked. Drake, I mean, uh, David Big Span has been following this guy around. He is not involved with anything of the sort. You know, at most, he's a conspiracy theorist. You know, but only some people get to be conspiracy theorists. And some people say, well, he's a hypocrite. Well, I guess some people get to be hypocrites, not others. But what's going on here? I know, I know a lot of people are like, okay, Mongo, please get to the point. What's going on here? So we're going to go to FloridaPolitics.com. Uh, this is where we're going to learn what Drake Works is actually doing. He filed to work. Uh, to, he filed to run for office. Uh, House District 30 in Florida. He's running on an anti-abortion, anti-vaccine mandate platform. So it says, quote, Republican Drake Wirtz, a former WWE wrestling referee, has filed to run in the House District 30 against Democratic Rep. Joy Goff Marcin, Marcil. Wirtz is a construction sales associate for Altamonte Springs. He's running to again flip a House seat that has changed party hands a few times in the past five or six elections. HD 30 represents a slice of North Central Orange County and South Central Seminole County. He's running on a platform that strongly opposes abortions while also advocating freedom and other health care choices. Interesting uh, use of words there. He opposes mask or vaccine mandates. He also wishes to expand school choice. Married with three children, Wirtz also pledged he would be far more visible within HD 30 that he's seen of golf Marcel. And then here's some quotes from, uh, words. It says, it's been on my heart for many months. Now, every excuse I had not to do it, God just closed those doors, like getting him fired from WWE, like getting him blacklisted from other wrestling jobs. Like he tried to even go back to being a wrestler. He's got used to be a deathmatch wrestler. He became a referee. Um, then he went to WWE, became an NXT referee. Uh, some people had some problems with the way he did his job, and I will actually agree with them if the the things that they said he did is actually true and that he was using his position to uh, preach and rant about his political leanings and stuff like that, including skipping some jobs. We'll talk about that stuff later. If, that, all, that, if all of that is true, then they were right to fire him. But that's a big if. That if is carrying a lot of weight. So uh, Wirtz continues, my main issue is abortion. In 2020, 74,485 babies were killed in abortions. We were like third in the nation in that regard. I feel like so many Republicans have been weak on this issue. They've just compromised. They tried to play nice with the left with regards to that. His second issue involving mass mandates came up this spring when Wirtz and others speaking at the Altamonte Springs City Commission meeting refused to mask up despite the Seminole County emergency order. He calls the issue, quote, medical freedom. Then it's another quote from Wirtz. It says, there's these threats of imposed mass mandates and vaccines by coercion and suppression. So I won't stand here in the gap to fight that. I want to stand in the gap to fight that. Uh, another issue is school choice that he's interested in. He says, I want to sustain school choice. I think we've seen in the past year that the public school system, while there are some great teachers there, is falling short in regards of children. We need to stop funding the systems and start funding the students. Uh, a little bit more says Wirtz said he is close to another former WWE figure in Seminole County, Longwood City Commissioner Matt Morgan, a retired wrestler whom Wirtz considers a political mentor. It's also another one of um, David Bixenspan's favorite obsessions. He's obsessed with Matt Morgan as well. Uh, 
So this was published August the 9th, 2021. Um, and what ends up happening is uh, various, uh, I guess you could say, I guess you could say reputable news outlets, ringside news, uh, Fightful, David Bixen, Span, they've all just decided to follow Drake works on the internet. And uh, this is the headline that came out on March 15, 2022. Matt Riddle donated hundreds to Drake works political campaign. Oh, another one of David Bixen Span's favorite obsessions is Matt Riddle. He was all over the whole Matt Riddle, Candy Cartwright thing. I mean, he was all over it, really drumming up a lot of uh, <laughs> fervor against Matt Riddle online. And um, I know it had to hurt him in his heart that she dropped that case, probably because she couldn't win it. But I follow, I've done videos on Drake Works and Matt Riddle, if you're interested and you're new to the channel. But, um, so let's talk about this. This is from Ringside News. So um, I'm not, we're going to talk about Oni Lorcan in a second. So Ringside News says, quote, Wirtz made unsubstantiated arguments about masking that went against the available science during a school board meeting in Seminole County, Florida. Drake Wirtz then cranked up the volume when he showed up in person meeting of the same board and said that the masking of children helped pedophiles and predators to prey on kids while simultaneously no showing and NXT taping. Drake has even called himself an quote extremist for Christ. Most of his anti-human trafficking talking points stemmed from the far right discredited QAnon movement. We're going to be talking about QAnon in a second. I'm actually going to the Anti-Defamation League, which is a, um, we're going to look at what the definition of QAnon is. We'll talk about that in a second. Because QAnon is a really big deal um, in these in these circles, political circles. This is where we get the uh, absolute permanent assaults on Q, uh, EC3 and CYN, Control Your Narrative, Wrestling Promotion. Adam Shear, uh, Killer Cross, all this kind of stuff, right? They're all just Trump supporters, so they're all evil bad guys. So let's let's stop right here and look at this thing. So it says, Wirtz made unsubstantiated arguments about masking that went against the available science. The available science of masking, uh, which constantly changed. Which, of course, if you want to be honest, Fauci said, you don't need to wear masks. Then he said you did need to wear a mask. Then they came out later and said that because because people were just wrapping anything across their face and they was considered a mask, that those things, they didn't really work. If you was wrapping a bandana around your face, that wasn't really going to help you. But they didn't say that until much, much later. Uh, and the available science on masking. Well, how many people actually listened to the folks who were anti-mask? There were people showing you literally doing videos to show you that smoke and different particles can actually go through those cloth masks that people were wearing. So if it was, there's particles, you know, COVID-19 is, you know, particles, yada, yada, yada. It goes in, it can go out. It can get between the, the, the peaks of that mask. And there was people doing videos showing you that, you know, and they said it went against available science. The available, it, the science is closed, which is not science. If the science is closed, it's not science. You know, there's still people out there questioning whether oxygen is a real thing. There's people who still question what the sun is made of. There's, you know, that's, that's what science is. We're constantly trying to figure things out. Science has never settled, you know, because you never know what new technology will come up. We will come across that could change our way of thinking. So when people start saying things like the science is settled, it's not about science. It's about their political opinion. They're just using science to shut off their political opinion. And then this, of course, is uh, hypocritical, but we, can, we don't need to go into that. So we're going to talk. We're not going to talk about QAnon. Instead, we're going to talk about this. I'm going to continue this article. It says before his WWE release, Drake was heavily critical of COVID-19 vaccination. After Triple H said that people of all religions were welcome in WWE, works walked out of the 2020 TakeOver In Your House event. That same year, Wirtz used his official WWE corporate email account to help coordinate a QAnon related event. Now, if all of this is true, and I'm not saying it at all, it is all true. If all of this is true, he was right to be fired. If you are using your official WWE corporate email to uh, 
any political uh, program, okay, that's you're going too far. If you walked out of an event, I don't care what the reason it was, unless you were violently attacked or you got into it and you needed to go take a break. If you walked out of an event, if you no showed an event, then I can fully understand why they would fire you. So I'm not 100%. I may have backed words previously before all that, but that's a big if, 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 if any of that is true. So back to ringside news. All the controversy occur encouraged Wirtz to run for office. Wirtz is a candidate for a Republican nomination of Florida state representative in the 30th district. Several of his former WWE colleagues and fellow wrestlers have contributed to his cause. A search of the Florida Department of State campaign finance database reveals the names of several donors from the world of pro wrestling. These public records include Karrion Cross, Matt Riddle, Elias, Bobby Fish, Oni Lorcan, and Jimmy Jacobs. Wirtz himself contributed $3,605 to the campaign. The total raised amount of 161 contributions was $17,733. So, uh, this is an interesting case, okay? Now, they can look this stuff up because it is public record. Now, what they did is to me even more bizarre because I, I I do this, but I looked up the the public records because I wanted to see that this is true. Now, here's the thing. I don't know the real names of that many wrestlers. All right. I'm one of these guys that, you know, my only, I can enjoy wrestling from the kayfabe perspective. I don't need to know what Killer Cross's real name is. I don't need to know that. I don't care. But these people, they do. So that means they found this list of names and it's 161 names, uh, 161 contributions. And they went through and cross-checked every single name on here to find out who was a wrestler and who wasn't. Yeah, they had to. You would have had to. Now, Matthew Riddle is clear as day on here because everybody knows Matt Riddle's real name is Matthew Riddle. He was in the UFC. Russell, he fought under his real name. Matt Riddle's name was mentioned because he gave hundreds of dollars to, to Drake Wirtz. How many hundreds of dollars? $300. $300. He gave Drake Wirtz $300. <laughs> on October the 7th, 2021, Matthew Riddle gave him $300. So not because uh, anyone was molested, anybody was hurt, beat up, uh, falsely imprisoned, robbed of anything. The big crime is that Matthew Riddle gave only that gave Drake Wartz, I'm sorry, $300, $300. This led only Lorcan because his name was on the list, AKA Biff Busick. He apologized and says that he doesn't want to be involved with QAnon. Uh, Biff Busick says a wrestling news site article was brought to my attention online. I am not a political person. I do not support QAnon or their beliefs. I thought I was just lending money and I did not knowingly donate to Drake's campaign. I know how people with those beliefs can hurt people. And I don't want to do that to anyone. Sorry, Biff. All right. What is the over under hundred dollars that Biff Busick gave to Drake Wirtz? He gave Drake Wirtz over a hundred dollars or under a hundred dollars. What do you think? If you said over, you were wrong. If you said under, you're also wrong. He gave him 100 United States dollars, $100. What he would probably spend more on gas or socks. He gave him 100 bucks. And now he's out here on his belly like a snake apologizing. Look, I get it. Biff Busick got, he lost his WWE job. You know, now he's out here trying to make a living as an independent wrestler. 
He doesn't want to be associated with QAnon. He doesn't want to be associated with these guys. He just don't want to. So if we could look up uh, the real name of Biff Busick, which I'm going to do uh, right now as you're listening to this, he gave him that money on February 7th, 2022. So I believe Oni Lorcan was already fired from WWE when he did this. Uh, but I don't remember when he got cut. But uh, February 7th, 2022. So Society Reviews, who is one of the many people who have keep bringing, bringing this to my attention, he's calling it a blacklist. That you see that there's a lot of wrestling journalists out here who are actually just kind of gatekeeping. And I, if I haven't said it in this article already, I probably should say it. Um, what the one thing Donald Trump said that is absolutely impenetrable in terms of the truth that came from it is that the media is the enemy of the people. These folks are actively trying to hurt the wrestling business. Society reviews is absolutely correct. They're actively trying to police the beliefs and behaviors of people who are not criminals. Unless this is a criminal behavior going on here, which it might be. And they said, oh, Drake works. He might have broken some campaign finance laws. OK, fine. That's that's at least a crime. Even if believing in conspiracy theories is not a fucking crime, because if it is, you need to lock everybody who believes in critical race theory up. Lock it. Lock up anybody who believes that somehow women are being op widely oppressed in society. That's fuck a fucking conspiracy theory. You believe that all straight white males are sitting in a room somewhere deciding the fate of gays and black people. That's a fucking conspiracy theory. But here is a, the only conspiracy theory you're not allowed to believe in is QAnon. So what is QAnon? Now, the reason I'm going to the Anti-Defamation League is because this is something that actually progressives believe. Uh, uh, progressives believe in ADL. It's an, usually an anti anti anti-Semitism organization. But here's a their definition of QAnon, which might not be true, but we don't know yet. It says QAnon is a wide reaching conspiracy theory popular among a range of right wing extremists and even some public supporters of President Trump. OK, um, conspiracy. What is a conspiracy theory? QAnon surfaced in 2017 on 4chan is first and foremost an online trolling and disinformation movement. Again, you're not telling me anything. What, while it is difficult to gauge the size of the movement, it is likely that QAnon adherents number in the tens of thousands. Okay, you're still not telling me what they believe. Adherents follow the anonymous Q and believe world governments are sh being controlled by a shadowy cabal of pedophiles who will eventually be brought to justice by President Trump. Okay, so they believe that the world is being controlled by a shadowy cabal of pedophiles. You mean like Ghislaine Maxwell? You mean like... You mean like Jeffrey Epstein? Uh, you know, I mean, what other crime could you possibly have where just both of these people got found guilty, both Ghislaine and Epstein, they both were found guilty, Right. But in Ghislaine Maxwell's case, all of the records of the people who were buying sex, all of those people, all that stuff was sealed. And we know that, that there were people who were saying Trump himself was there. There was people saying Bill Clinton was there. There was people saying that, hey, the uh, one of the princes of England was on the list. There was a lot of people who were supposedly on this list. And... That stuff just vanished. It disappeared. They sealed it forevermore. You're not allowed to talk about it anymore. Now, I know, you know, people are saying, hey, Mongo, you sound like a conspiracy theorist. Well, I'm saying, look at the shit. Uh, the, the biggest pedophile ring in, in years gets busted. And you're not arresting anybody who was involved outside of two people. The biggest pedophile ring involving multimillionaires has been going on for years and years. You arrest two people, one of which commits suicide, supposedly. And the other one, well, she's in prison and she has not suicided herself yet. I don't know. That seems to 
that seems to lend some credence to this QAnon thing. If we, I mean, am I supposed to not know that Ghislaine Maxwell and Jeffrey Epstein was involved with this huge conspiracy of uh, pedophiles and sex traffickers? Am I supposed to pretend that that didn't occur? I don't know. Let's continue with their saying to say. Uh, QAnon conspiracy theory is scattershot and sprawling with anti-government elements. Adhering actively so distrust in democratic institutions. While the ADL does not believe that all QAnon adherents are inherently extremists, this is a dangerous theory that has inspired violent acts. Okay, so it's saying that it's a pro-Trump movement. That fundamentally, the theory claims that almost every president in recent American history up until Donald Trump has been a puppet put in place by a global elite of power brokers hell-bent on enriching themselves and maintaining their satanic child-murdering sex cult. Q is a reference to Q clearance or Q access authorization, terms which used to describe a top secret clearance level within the Department of Energy. According to QAnon lore, this global elite known as the Deep State, or the Cabal, control not just world governments but the banking system, the Catholic Church, the agricultural and pharmaceutical industries, the media and entertainment industry, all working around the clock to keep the people of the world poor, ignorant, and enslaved. Interesting that they would use that language. Because if I was to say critical race theory suggests that white people and throughout history have been trying to keep black people poor, ignorant, and enslaved, folks would say that's absolutely true. And then they would say, uh, look at uh, Jim Crow, look at all of these various policies that were in place and that would try to buttress their argument. They would attempt to buttress their argument by using real life laws. Then they would even have a pretty good point. There is some uh, laws that occurred that detriment that were detrimental to black people. That's where there were laws that were detrimental to gays. There were laws that were detrimental to women. But there are also laws that are detrimental to white people. There are also laws that are detrimental to um, straight people. There are also laws that are detrimental to <laughs> everyone. That's just kind of how governments work. When government writes a law, it's usually with a large swath and it affects more than just, it affects people sometimes directly, sometimes indirectly. There's secondary and tertiary ripples of these laws that occur. Now, some of this stuff, for instance, the deep state, I never took the deep state to mean QAnon, the deep state, as far as my understanding of it, was the unmoving section of the government, the administration of the government that exists regardless of who is the president. So if there's a lot of cabinet positions that, that, that work through patronage, meaning you come in, the, the president comes in, they say, we're going to put this guy as the head of this of this organization. Linda McMahon as the head of the Small Business Association or something like that, right? So there's going there's people who work in the small business that have been working there for 10 to 20 years. Some people who've been working there for 30 years. It doesn't matter that Trump is the president. It doesn't matter that Linda McMahon is the boss of this organization. She was handpicked by p political patronage. None of that matters. What matters is that these people who are in this organization, they are the ones who have to draw up policy and then execute policy. And what they can do is they can slow any change that you would want. That is what the deep state, I've always took the deep state to mean. I have always took the deep state to mean that there are people that work in the government that are there, that are not voted on, that they are hired into that spot, and then they stay there forever. And they have incredible political power because they've been there forever. And that is true. As a matter of fact, if you, I'm, I am a major in public administration. That's one of the first things they teach you is that the administrators exist outside of the political aspect so that the government can maintain institutional knowledge. Institutional knowledge means how things work in this organization. Because if you have to keep flipping people every four years or every two years, then the organization becomes pretty chaotic and it doesn't really work. So it has to be people within the organization that is immune to the, to the political changes of that organization. Get it? 
that's what I took the deep state to mean because that is true. Now, whether the deep state means some uh, global elite cabal or whatever, we know that these people are, we know that this stuff exists. They claim that there's no global cabal. What do you call NATO? What do you call the United Nations? What, like, like, how are these people are joining organizations? They're getting countries to join each other. The, you know, you had NAFTA, the National, was a North American Financial Alliance or something like that. That's the kind of stuff that people are thinking of. It's like, hey, it sounds silly until you start thinking and breaking it apart. The global banking elite. You ever heard the World Economic Forum? Oh, does that not exist? Am I supposed to pretend the World Economic Forum doesn't exist? Am I supposed to believe NATO and the United Nations don't exist? If I say real fucking words, like, hey, these people, they might all be working and uh, have some kind of backdoor deals with the World Economic Forum. Is that a conspiracy? That's a conspiracy theory. What? It's a conspiracy theory when they have a website? When they have, when you can actually track people in that shit? And yes, the Catholic Church, the entertainment industry. Yes, we know that these people are involved with this stuff. And if you say that they're not, okay, then release all the names in Jelaine Maxwell's uh, case file. Show me the names of the people who are in there. I'm pretty sure it's Joe Blow, Joe Blow 1, Joe Blow 2, Joe Blow 3, Mary Magdalene, and a bunch of other people. They're not going to be fucking Tom Cruise, right? He's not going to be in there. Will Smith wouldn't be in there or anything like that. So why would you care if, you know, some long dead people or some folks nobody knows are on names are on this ledger? You wouldn't care, you know, but you probably do care because they might be on that list. Now, I don't want to read this whole thing because we're going to be here forever. But here's what the uh, here's what the ADL. This is why they care. They said QAnon adherents have been linked to acts of murder violence, kidnapping, and public disturbance. In 2020, the novel coronavirus has provided additional fodder for QAnon followers who have eagerly folded the pandemic into their profoundly paranoid worldview. It is paranoid. I will give them that. It's paranoid. And you could say QAnon adherents have been linked to acts of murder, violence, and kidnapping. So have socialists. So has uh, Black Lives Matter. So how is QAnon different from Black Lives Matter? Black Lives Matter have their own conspiracy theories called critical race theory. They believe in white privilege. All white people are privileged, especially the poor ones for some reason. Even the ones who are dirt fucking poor in Appalachia and Ohio or in Kentucky or in middle of nowhere in Wyoming, all of those people are white privileged. And that's a conspiracy theory and nobody has anything to say about that. Now, Yes, people can believe things and go to the extreme. We we already know that. You know, there's there's um, socialists who are number one when it comes to violence and stuff like that. Anarchists, you know, there you very rarely see free marketers and people like that that are into burning shit, bombing stuff, and kidnapping and murdering people. Usually, people who believe in conspiracy theories, they do believe that the only way to stop it is to is to fight back and usually in physical violence. There was just a Black Lives Matter uh, gentleman who shot at a Democrat. I think it was in, was it in Kentucky or something like that? He tried to, it was a Black Lives, I'm going to put his name and face on the screen. Uh, if I can remember, I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but I'll Google it. He tried to kill a Democrat. How come we never see Black Lives Matter involved with this kind of crazy conspiracy theory and they're involved with murder and, and rape and all this kind of shit? even though they are or that they're just involved with lots and lots of <laughs> money laundering and fraud. I, I don't know, man, but it seems very strange that we get, we get into this stuff and all of a sudden this, this shit doesn't exist, you know? And I'm not a QAnon -er. I don't know what any of this stuff means. It is not important. And this is why I don't really do deep dives into this stuff because people are trying to call you a conspiracy theorist and all this kind of shit. For starters, being a conspiracy theorist ain't nothing wrong with it. Everybody got a conspiracy theory, man. It's about whether you got legitimate um, information backing up. Like I just sat here and I didn't do any real research. I'm going off the top of my head, really. 
if you say the World Economic Forum, oh, that's not a conspiracy theory. That's not a shadowy, uh, non-democratic uh, body of individuals who just happen to be in government. I'm like, oh, okay, clearly that's not true. You can look at the website, look at some of the members and say that a lot of them were in government, especially the Americans. You know, that doesn't mean, <laughs> I mean, come on, you know, you think that the UN and NATO don't have their own agendas? Come on, you know, so everybody has their conspiracy theories. Everybody's a hypocrite in some way or another. Everybody's a conspiracy theorist in some way or another. Why do we care so much about what Drake Wirtz believes? Is Drake Wirtz a, a criminal? Did he kill somebody in a hotel room like Jimmy Snooker? No. Did he rob a bank like Nick Gage? No. He just believes some shit that you don't believe. He's not. That doesn't make him a bad guy. It doesn't make him a horrible person. That's worth being following him on Twitter and Gab and Facebook for years and years and just just trying to ruin this guy's fucking life. Trying to ruin the careers of Matt Riddle and Elias and Drake and um, Oni Lorcan, who's a fucking coward, by the way. You know, he's a fucking coward. And this, to close, and this is going to be the end of it, as far as I'm concerned. These wrestlers who keep backing down and apologizing, every time something happens, Every time they get outed as a Trump supporter or something like that, they have to back down and apologize. You're a coward and you're only making it harder for everybody else. And you're making it harder on yourself because I'm sure. Yes, I know you have to make a living, but you're going to make a living on your belly. You're going to be down there for a long time, man. Got to got to consider it. Got to consider how long Biff Busey going to have to kiss boots and crawl around on his stomach. You're going to be there for a long, long time if you keep bending over. If you bend over once, it's like prison almost. You bend over once, they expect you to bend over every time. All right? So the choice is yours. 